Good evening. Good evening. I hereby call this November the 13th meeting of the Public Safety Committee to order. As always, as a matter of point, I'd like to introduce uh, our public safety staff that help to make uh, the citizens of this community safe every single day. I'll start with our city manager. I'd like to recognize Mr. Lee Garrity, our city attorney, Attorney Carmen, our public safety attorney, Attorney Sykes. I'd like to recognize our chief of fire, Chief Mayo. Uh, we have uh, our director of emergency management, Mr. Mill Sattler, and our chief of police, uh, Chief Thompson. Uh, as always, I know there are many city staff that help to make uh, things happen in and out for our citizens every day, like uh, Ms. Caruth, our human resources director, and many other staff. So I won't be able to recognize everybody, but we thank you all uh, for what you do. We do have a few items on the general agenda. Uh, the first item recognizing Captain, Captain Heitman. Uh, there's a resolution affirming the city of Winston-Salem's ban the box policy. And then there's an ordinance establishing standards of operation for trolley pubs here in the city of Winston-Salem. Uh, there are about six items on the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are approved with one sweeping motion unless a member of this committee wishes to be pulled for consideration. Uh, with that being said, members of the committee, are there any items on the consent agenda that should be pulled uh, at this time? Uh, if there are none, I'd entertain a motion. Move approval. A motion. Second. And properly seconded. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please vote yes. The consent agenda is unanimously approved. Item G1, please. Item G1, recognition of Captain Phyllis Heitman. I'd like to recognize Chief Mayo, who will do the honors. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Thank Good you. Afternoon. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, uh, other members of the Council and Committee. Good afternoon. I'm going to ask Captain Phyllis Heitman to join me up here. And uh, I just thought this would be an appropriate venue to recognize Captain Heitman when she retires on, well, her last day in the station is November 29th, I believe, officially. Uh, her last day is November 30th. And at that time, she will be the longest serving female firefighter in the, in the fire department's history, uh, having served 30 years, seven months, and nine days. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, so uh, we think that is an, a remarkable accomplishment given the time constraints, the abuse on the body uh, that, that being a firefighter uh, requires. I, I like to remind folks when I can that the shift uh, schedule of a firefighter over 30 years is the equivalent of an eight to five employee working eight hours a day every day for 30 years. So uh, we certainly appreciate Captain Heitman's dedication uh, to, uh, to, the, to the city of Winston-Salem and uh, its citizens. Uh, she was hired, uh, so uh, the mayor pro tem will remember this. Uh, in 1987, the city of Winston-Salem dismantled the public safety model and we and the fire department hired two big classes uh, that year as the fire department began to add uh, additional staff. And Captain Heitman was in that first class. She was hired April 21st, 1987, was promoted to fire engineer January 31st, 1994, and then to captain on December 15th, 1997. Uh, so she is uh, not only long tenured uh, in the fire department, she has a lot of experience, a lot of tenure as a company officer. Um, she, uh, I think one of her, so we asked for uh, sort of some notable things from, from her career and she pointed out that she was the, assigned as the staging officer in August of 1998 when the, uh, when the Reynolds fire occurred, which is, everybody knows is probably the most significant fire in the city's modern history. Uh, so uh, she has, a, again, a lot of memories, a lot of experience. Uh, she's contributed a lot over her three decades of, of uh, time here. And uh, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we have a video that was about a minute long that the marketing and communications department produced. I'd like to show that. It'd be an honor, Chief. When I came into the department in 1987, and I was used to working in a daycare center with all females, and when I came on with the fire department, it was a whole new world because I was one woman in a class of 26 men. Everybody is like a family. You have your family at home, you have your family in the fire department. I did the Firefighter Combat Challenge for 10 years. It's called the Toughest Two Minutes in Sports. It is an obstacle course set up, and the firefighters go and you run through it. WTQR was doing a, a contest. They were going to let somebody carry the Olympic torch. 
So my little sister sent in a letter saying that I had competed in this firefighter games and I had completed it, the first female to complete it. And so I won the right to carry the torch in the 1996 Olympics. So I got to carry it down through Lexington. Life's all about choices. You make it work. And I made a great choice 30 years ago to come on to the Winston-Salem Fire Department. It's, it's made me a stronger person, physically and mentally. I love the job. I love the, the bonding, the camaraderie. It's amazing. Unless you've been in this situation, you don't know how good it is. When I came in the department in 1987, it was worth doing it twice. Do it again. <laughs> so as is. Here. As as is custom, uh, Captain Heitman will retrieve her helmet uh, after she no longer needs it, and uh, we wish her a long, happy, and healthy retirement. Captain Heitman, would you like to say any words? Can I just say thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor to work for the city for 30 years. Thank you. Well, well I, I know some members of the committee may have a couple of words, but I just want to say on behalf of, of this committee, we thank you for your commitment and dedication to the city. You mentioned sports in your presentation, and one of the reasons why I like, you know, Jerry Rice or Michael Jordan is because I like to say that I witness greatness, and, and you're truly a trailblazer and a pioneer in this city, and I'm honored to say that I've been able to witness greatness. So thank you what you've done for this community and what you'll continue to do. Thanks. Members of the committee, thanks again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Captain Heitman, Captain Heitman, you, before you take your seat, uh, our, our illustrious Mayor Pro Temp would like to have a couple of words. You know I would not let you leave without <laughs> making a comment. I'm so pleased that we had a city manager, Mr. Bill Stewart, who had ears to hear and eyes to see that women were capable to do their job. One of the first women we put in a job was Ms. Goforth, and she was the administrative person. And I looked around and I saw she was a very humble, fine woman and had capabilities. But for some reason, they made her to go for this and for that and to serve. And I said, no, no, she's not there to be a server. She's there to be someone to do the job because she's capable and able to do it. And I'm very pleased as he instilled that into the minds of people. And I saw he had Mr. Albady up there who was over. Uh, the people understood that women are smart, we can endure, we can tolerate. And as a trailblazer in what you've done, I thank God for giving us you. And I pray that you will have a wonderful retirement. Councilman Rubessi. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, Captain. We want to thank you not only for your personal service, but for the model that you have been inspiring other young women to follow after you. There are a lot more than just one in the fire department now, and we appreciate your serving as a role model and leader for them, as well as the entire city. Thank you so much. Councilman McIntosh. You're taking the time to leave, and we're just getting around to re redoing our fire station, so it makes it more accommodating to women. So, thanks for putting up with all the all the stuff you did over the years, and good health and retirement. Councilman Bellars. So, loyalty is an amazing thing, and I'm sure people tried to tempt you away from the city, uh, take your talents elsewhere. Uh, I am very grateful, having just retired myself, sort of from a 30-year career. And I know the commitment that it takes to stay and contribute back. The first few years of any career, you're on a learning curve, aren't you? I mean, you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. But at some point in your career, you start giving back to people that are coming behind you. You're teaching people. You're coming up with ideas. You're taking your experience, and you're contributing back to the city. And, and anybody with a career pattern such as yours, uh, in a variety of ways, pioneering, uh, it's that giving back. And so anybody that sticks with this city, I know, has one not only talent, but has made contributions at a variety of levels. And I thank you for sticking with us all these years. Thanks again, Captain Hyman. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Item G2, please. Item G2, resolution affirming the city of Winston-Salem's ban the box policy. And as Mr. Raleigh makes his way to the podium, 
Uh, members of the committee, uh, earlier this year we did do a strategic planning session. In that session we talked about the direction we wanted to go as a council, as a committee. Uh, this particular ban the box initiative falls under the safe and secure community initiative. And what it essentially does is remove questions on the application process that will judge applicants based on their merits and not necessarily their mistakes. So there are a number of people here who are interested in seeing this resolution approved. There are some people who signed up to speak and we'll give them a moment. Before we do that, we wanna queue up uh, Mr. Evan Raleigh, who is the Director of Business Inclusion and Advancement, who'll give us a brief presentation about the Band of Box Initiative. Mr. Raleigh. Thank you, Chairman Taylor, and good evening to you and to the members of the committee. Good evening. Uh, good evening. At the uh, Chairman's request, we are bringing to you a resolution this evening affirming the City of Winston-Salem's Ban the Box policy, and in addition to that, highlighting some of the other measures that uh, you all as a council have taken to provide second chance opportunities for returning citizens to the community. Uh, and so many years ago, the City of Winston-Salem recognized the importance of eliminating barriers to employment for citizens with criminal histories and understood the need to provide them with avenues to gainful employment as a means of reducing recidivism and, and suppressing crime in the community. And so in recognition of that need, uh, as the Chairman mentioned, uh, the Mayor and City Council adopted the policy of banning the box. And as the Council Member uh, described, that uh, removes, at least on the initial application, the question of your criminal history to make sure that you were judged first, uh, the applicants for the city were first judged on the merits of their uh, work histories uh, and presentation. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in the year 2014, the Mayor and City Council uh, approved the Successful Outcomes After Release Program, uh, SOAR for short. And what that program did was in addition to providing, uh, making available funds to provide grants to organizations that, was, that were working to rehabilitate uh, and reintegrate uh, members, uh, returning citizens into the community, it also made available funds that allowed the city to hire former offenders directly uh, and provide them with uh, bridges to gainful employment. And to date, uh, more than three dozen uh, individuals have come through that program, successfully graduated, and we, are, we almost have a perfect record in terms of those individuals that we have employed through that program transitioning to work in full-time opportunities with us or with other organizations and completing their six months of full-time employment. The other uh, item that, or the other action that this uh, resolution calls for is, is for members of the community, uh, partner agencies, other organizations throughout the community to follow your lead in terms of uh, providing second chance employment opportunities to folks that uh, may have criminal histories within our community. So with that, Chairman, I'll yield. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Mm -hmm. Mayor Tim Burt. I'm gonna have to leave, but I wanna say that all of us have felt the importance of reentry. But the Chairman here made it one of his initiatives and we supported it. And I've said to the city manager, if we expect for businesses to do, to do and to work with people, then we must be an example. So I commend you for your efforts in having the support of all of us to say to you who have not always been on the right path, how you've gotten on the right path with your dedication and commitment. Thank you for your support. Councilmember McIntosh. Um, no, I, when this came first, came forward the first time I was in support of it, and I think it's a great program. I'll say continue. Councilman Belarson. I want to be clear. Um, and the box basically opens the door for initial entry into an application process. Um, there is still a process of background checks for all employees uh, for the city, but what this allows us to do is uh, have that face-to-face -face encounter and, and, and create a, an environment that starts off with a valid uh, conversation with potential employees and trying to gauge uh, their capacity to add to the city's uh, uh, staffing. And I think it's an excellent move to remove that barrier so that we can get on with it. If serious things show up in a subsequent um, background investigation, they will reveal themselves and, and that, will, that will resolve whatever those problems are, but not to prejudge individuals with a, with a, uh, with a stamp. Thank you. Councilman Bessie. Yeah, I think this committee has done a good job uh, by emphasizing this and by um, working for initiatives that implement the concept. 
Uh, I'm very pleased to be from a community that uh, this initiative is not only endor uh, endorsed and embraced by the, um, the city itself, but by the private sector. Uh, another long-serving uh, woman pioneer in, in Winston-Salem, Gail Anderson, who's retiring this year from the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce, uh, has championed this in the, uh, in the private sector, I know, as well. Uh, and we, as Councilmember Larson mentioned, this doesn't guarantee a job to anybody. What this does is guarantee a chance to get through the door before being disqualified. Um, and the, uh, the, the important thing for all our citizens to keep in mind, in addition to uh, the, um, uh, the value to the individual and the individual's family, this is of, of great value to the community. But remember that if they can't get a job, uh, they're far more likely to get drawn back into the kind of criminal activity that got them in, in, a, in hot water in the first place. Uh, so this is a, uh, a family-friendly policy, and it's community-friendly policy, and, and we all need to remember that. Deborah Simmons. Deborah uh, Not only did Ms. Anderson champion it, but the Urban League it was Mr. Keith Granberry. That was one of his problems. And because I think that they didn't mind saying to us, it's important for us to work with free entry people, and they did a very good job. Uh, members of the committee, this is an action item, and we'll need approval of this resolution. We've, we, we've also heard uh, very vehemently from Ms. Lisa Sykes, who has been communicating by phone, uh, who's here today to speak, but first sign up on the agenda, and we'll try to get it moving as quickly as possible. Uh, is there anything else on your end, Mr. Raleigh? No, sir. If you'll just hold tight for any questions, please, sir. Sure. We'd like to bring Mark Scholl. Mr. Scholl, as you come, if you'll just give your name and address for the record, and you have uh, three minutes to make your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you. My name is Mark Scholl, and I live at 3925 Chilton Drive here in Winston-Salem, and uh, I'm a licensed counselor and an associate professor at Wake Forest University, and um, I founded an organization called New Leaf uh, Career Partners in November of 2014, and for the past um, three years, uh, me and my fellow career counselors, we've provided career counseling services to returning citizens here in Winston-Salem. And uh, two years before that, I did the same work in Beaufort County, North Carolina, uh, Washington, to be more specific. And I just wanted to say that uh, I found the returning citizens that I've worked with to be uh, very motivated, uh, engaged in learning new skills, and uh, ultimately successful in attaining employment in our local community, and just some of the positions that they've acquired uh, in the past three years since I've been working with folks is uh, restaurant positions, uh, cashiers, hotel housekeeping, uh, forklift driver, a peer support specialist, motivational speaker, um, carpentry work, electrical work, and returning to complete uh, college degrees. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. We appreciate your service as well. Uh, next on the agenda to speak is Ms. Lisa Sykes. If you'll come and give your name and address for the record, and you also have three minutes to make your presentation. My name is Lisa Sykes. I reside at 5650 Lakeside Drive in Pocktown, and I'm a resident of the North Ward. Um, I represent a group of about 100 people, 100 people in the community coming from uh, congregations of faith, nonprofits, civic organizations um, who have come together behind the idea that there is a problem when people don't have a second chance after being incarcerated. Um, this group is coordinated by the All God's Children Ministry Team at Knollwood Baptist Church. We first looked at it as an issue around mass incarceration. The United States has a lot of people in prison, a lot more than other countries, and when they get out, they have a hard time finding work. And so it's important for us to be able to help with a disproportionate number, especially of African American men in that situation. Um, the Winston-Salem Urban League State of Winston-Salem report and the mayor's thought force uh, both pointed out Ban the Box as a way to help reduce the poverty rate in this city. And 
the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce, which you've mentioned, Gail Anderson. Um, the All God's Children Ministry Team works with the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce to produce a video about giving second chances. Um, the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce has an excellent uh, section on their site about hiring folks who've been incarcerated before. Uh, and I hope that what the city will do, having shown itself and proved to itself that persons who've been incarcerated can make fine employees, I hope that the city will go about making a very public expression of that with this resolution and in your wards to encourage private employers to go out and do what the city has proven to itself is effective. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, no one else has signed up to speak. Uh, but before we move to vote, I just want to take a quick moment and give, can I say, a shout out uh, to those members of the city staff who support the SOAR program and the work that we're speaking of every single day. Uh, and those staff members consist of Mr. Trevor, Ms. Faith, uh, Mr. Troy Sneed, Ms. Regina Ford Hall, Mr. Evan Raleigh, uh, the city manager, who have all fought a good fight to help to get this work done. Members of the committee, with that being said, I'd entertain a motion to approve this item. It's been motioned officially by Mr. Larson and seconded by Mr. McIntosh. All in favor, please vote yes. And that is unanimous. Thank you. And Mayor Pro Temp, I know you have to leave, so we'll excuse you now. Okay. Item G3, please. Item G3, ordinance establishing standards for the operation of trolley pubs in city streets by the addition of Article 13 to Chapter 78 of the City Code. As you remember, members of the committee, uh, this item came to us last month. Uh, they gave us a, some background information about trolley pubs. It was our direction to move forward with the approval of uh, an ordinance. That's the word, right? An ordinance uh, on trolley pubs. And tonight, we have that before us. Before we move to speak on it and vote, we want to cue Mr. Greg Turner, who will give us the background information. Certainly, Mr. Chairman, as you recall, you talked about this a couple of months ago direct the staff to bring an ordinance back, as you just said, and what we've done is incorporated it into the Certificate of Convenience and Public Necessity section of the City Ordinance, giving you draft language to take a look at. If the incorporation into that section and the language that you have in front of you is acceptable, we'll bring that back to you for your consideration next month. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Turner at this time? Councilmember McIntosh. Um, how often would... Um, and someone who was granted permission to do this, how often would they come back to us? Is it an annual renewal or is it? I'm going to direct all technical questions to Assistant City Attorney in whole. <laughs> <laughs> you have the floor. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, it would be the same as a certificate for any other type of vehicle for hire, uh, tax cab or limo. They, they get renewed every three years. Every three years. Mm -hmm. so, would it be advisable to have a shorter period of time for this, to review this, since this is a, a very public sort of occurrence um, involving alcohol? Is it possible to um, to make that change? I think it would be nice at least after the first year to take a look at it and see if it's a successful program or not. Yes, yeah, certainly. I can, I can easily fix that. Thank you. Yeah, and it, and it looks like one year might be on the table. So we always say we measure many times and cut once. So. I may have misspoke. This will come to us again, as Mr. Turner mentioned, next month uh, to vote on the actual ordinance. So maybe you'll bring it to us to be reviewed after one year. Uh, Councilmember Bessie. Yeah, I just had an inquiry. I know that uh, as the ordinance is written, it um, uh, appears at first read to limit it to uh, power assisted um, vehicles, but you know, which I can understand given our terrain, <coughs> you don't want people stuck at the bottom of the hill on a, on a pedal powered only. But, as I was reading the memo uh, further, I wasn't sure whether there was anticipation that there would be some of those pedal powered only out there, uh, but we were not, they were, because they were not licensed, they were not, they didn't fall within our purview or how that intersection worked. Yeah, I might defer to my colleague Lori Sykes in a moment, but um, our intention was only to uh, permit uh, electric battery assisted or motor assisted trolleys because they have to meet certain state requirements. And is there a, um, uh, under the state statute, is there a, um, uh, 
a, a loophole for the pedal powered only to, to operate outside of our formal licensing program? I'm not sure I can speak to that at the moment. We we'll recognize Attorney Sykes. <laughs> um, I don't know if you would call it a loophole, but a bicycle is, is defined that way, and, and it would not be a motor vehicle or a low speed motor vehicle or a vehicle. And so none of the safety and equipment requirements would apply to bicycle only trolley cars. Yes, Mr. Bessie. Uh, would, it, would it be the case that these vehicles can? operate on the, the street under bicycle applicable rules, but they can't hire out as poly, you know, uh, trolley, uh, pub trolleys and uh, uh, have alcohol as they ride down the street. Okay. Exactly. That's the thing. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Larson. Yeah. Um, it, it's a personal conveyance. I mean, right, this, is, this carries people as compared to an individual on a bicycle, for example. Did I notice correctly in this uh, that alcohol, the question of alcohol, which I raised last time uh, in, on, a, on a public street, uh, under the definition uh, that it would be allowable on this vehicle, uh, but is based on state law that says um, it is a conveyance closed vehicle, whatever, and you can allow open alcohol for a passenger on a, public, on a vehicle? For if the vehicle for hire, yes, sir. So if I'm driving and I have a passenger beside me, they can have the beer can open? Unless they hire, unless they hire you. It has to be for hire? Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm in a taxi cab, I can have a beer can open? Depending on that company's policy, the state law would allow it. That's I'm just trying to figure out what the deal is here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so... Um, it's going to be a lot of fun happening this weekend. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so... Um, we can, based on state, because this will be a licensed state vehicle, right? Authorized to be on the road, has the rear view mirrors and the signal lights and all this sort of stuff. That, and, and that's sort of the difference because it's motorized Correct. compared to pedal, and that's, that's what we're differentiating here. Yes, sir. Um, that, um, you know, it, 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 can, it has to conform and be licensed by the state and then licensed as a business by us or whatever, authorized by us as a public conveyance vehicle. Correct. And we're arguing over how many, how frequently. Uh, as I read it, we have a lot of flexibility on canceling uh, if we feel that uh, revoking that license prior to the renewal. There could be like there's some pretty clear wording in there. I, I don't care if we have to renew it every year. I mean, it just seems to me we are pretty well protected there. But if, to carry this one step further then, if, if somebody wants to open a business that isn't motorized, but carries 12 people, and they're all pedaling, uh, do we have any control over that at all? Um, the state law, state law, at my understanding, and what I read and researched in and talking with the representative of DMV, the state law doesn't recognize that kind of creature okay. yet. But is that, a, is that a public conveyance? Can that be handled like a taxi cab? I mean, if it's public conveyance and, and you're not, and you got, you're carrying passengers, which is the next question I sort of have, but if you're carrying passengers, does that constitute a licensable uh, taxi service, basically? How are we handling, for example, people that are bicycling down on 4th Street and carrying somebody up and down the street? How are those people being addressed in, in their conveyance? Well, I would just, I would just um, point out that we do have an um, ordinance on horse-drawn vehicles. Right. And those, of course, are not powered uh, by a motor or battery. Um, I mean, the real question here is, if you're carrying a passenger, whether it be on a, uh, a pedal trolley car or in a taxi cab or on a horse-drawn buggy or whatever, you're conveying it presumably for money, but maybe not. Uh, and and is, does that constitute a special kind of transportation as far as licensing goes in the city? Well, um, we don't have a category to address that per se currently. It wouldn't, I think you asked whether it would be a simple taxi cab. Taxi cab, there are specific requirements in the statute that they can insurance and cab, and those same things for women can do. So um, I'm, I'm not sure that there are requirements that would be something which 
uh, human power. It's not the same thing as what there would be to mobile power. That would be the whole other Yeah, I see. Mr. Chairman. If I'm understanding the council member's question, is it that do you get an exemption against the restriction that is already on state law about consuming alcohol if you're in a non-motorized certificate? Or or anything, uh, you know, tail lights, rear view mirrors, safety devices, anything that, um, you know, you're carrying public, you're carrying the public. So, you know, theoretically, and they're carrying them on public streets, maybe alcohol involved. Uh, the only difference seems to be is whether there's an electric motor on the vehicle or not. And what we're saying is, if it has an electric motor on it, we're good to go. We can regulate it and do whatever. If we're saying it doesn't have an electric motor on it, then we lose all control. Is that basically? Uh, no, I apologize. If, if we, the distinction that I was trying to make in the, mem <coughs> excuse me, in the memo was that the, the safety and equipment standards are already there for motor or electric assisted vehicles. If, there, if we are going to allow a human powered only, we would need to establish those in the ordinance. They're not in the ordinance now. No, because no. our recommendation would be to to not allow those and allow only the ones that are already subject to extensive regulation. And we can outlaw them. Then, then we have the right to outlaw pedal vehicles. No. That's what I was going to say. The activity that you're trying to get to for these vehicles that are not covered by state law, in other words, uh, the alcohol, they're not allowed to do so. You just can't set up a human powered bicycle and have folks drink an alcohol up and say it's okay because it's not covered by statute. But technically, they're not authorized to do that by law. It's for that. On such a long device. That's state law. Okay, can I have a birthday party with non alcohol pedal thing? I mean, I'm trying to understand what vehicles are going to be going up and down 4th Street. So, and, and just for those who are interested, you just heard from our public safety attorney and our city attorney. And, and I would just ask, you know, that we just sort of take the trolley pub on its merit. And if there are any other nuances that emerge, that they are vetted and discussed at this committee, as we've always done. I think Councilmember Larson brings up some excellent points. I don't think that we have to worry about it. There, there aren't any uh, bicycle-powered carts that cart people at this time. But should that come up, then I imagine it be brought to this committee for consideration, correct? Yes, and we can certainly provide some answers to those questions. Great. So the, the specific request that was made by this company was, was to be treated as a vehicle for hire. That's their preference. So, Mr. McIntosh, forgive me. So specifically, there are no rickshaw services operating in Winston. Would they have, would somebody wanted to go into the rickshaw business, would they have to come to us for a license? If they wanted to charge for that service, if they okay, wanted so, to just provide so it. So the, the for hire part is the part that makes them come to us. Exactly. So, and and under, had, no, under no circumstances can you bicycle around town with, a, with an open beer, is what I'm hearing. Correct. Are there any questions about anything that we've been presented at this particular time? What I did want to do is just sort of overcomplicate it. I want to just take it on face value. So, so see the attorney. What we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to change the um, rule period, basically. Three to one. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that there are clawback provisions, for lack of a better term, as Mr. Larson mentioned, where if something didn't go the way we thought it would go, we could cancel it at any particular time. And that's in there now, but. Is there anything else, Mr. Larson? You've got the look on your face like you want to well, get something out. you know, the rickshaw, somebody comes up, we're going to be revisiting this, or somebody says, gee, you got pedal vehicles going down the street now, I can do that. I'm just not going to serve alcohol, and they're not going to be motorized. Um, you know, I, I, I just wonder if there's, if there's a category of vehicles here that are, are pedal-powered or are, are fall into that area of public conveyance. And it has to do with exactly the question of where the money is exchanged here to move people around, and and if alcohol is involved or not involved. But you know, I, I, maybe I, maybe this is just too esoteric. But we're opening a new kind of vehicle to be on the streets, and it's going to be pedal power. It's going to be highly visible, and and um, and it's going to have income production capacity. And I suspect there'll be variants of that that people will look at. And it's, it's fine. I mean, I love the idea of having bicycles up and down the streets of Fourth Street. But I'm just wondering if, what our responsibility is legally uh, as a city to, to regulate this. 
for the, and, and particularly if it is not just an individual riding the bike, but they are in fact carrying somebody. We have insurance clauses written into this provision. We have, you know, we're covering ourselves for this particular slice of the pie. I'm just wondering if the slice is a little more complicated than what we're saying. And maybe, maybe you're absolutely right, we just need to deal with this part in the next week or two so we can get on with it, because I, I want to see this happen. But I am concerned a little bit about the variance of this. I thought we had rickshaws. I thought I saw one on 4th Street. There, no, sir. there are um, uh, municipalities that have heavy travel in a term comment, I think you were going to answer that question directly. I was, but also to say is, is, uh, is the point you kind of made is that we should make sure in the ordinance that these other modifications to the extent they want to carry people in cars so for that um, service are considered. I guess maybe this will that get to the concern that you raised? It, it would eliminate a, an economic opportunity for somebody if they wanted to open a rickshaw. Well, well, I mean, I'm not sure I want to do that. No, it's, it's quite all right. And if someone wants to open up a rickshaw, I know we don't usually tend to see that in, in colder months, but if they want to open up one, I'd ask it, it come back. And we meet twice a month, so we're happy to evaluate it any time. Well, we dealt with golf carts. Uh, we did. That, that was a, we, we have a pattern of dealing with things as the business opportunity approaches us, which I think is the right way to do it. All right, uh, nothing further. This is not an action item. It will come back to us in December for consideration uh, as an action item. Uh, so item G3 is officially completed. If there's anything else that we need to discuss, are there any items that should be considered for the greater good of the order? Considering none, we consider this meeting to be adjourned. Thank you. Cheers.